the reason that we are that we're here talking about this is because you Marcel have have chosen a couple uh, presentations from the International Auricular Therapy Symposium which yeah. had a focus on ear cartography this year and there were three presentations one was uh, was David Olimi talking about kind of a plea for a scientific basis in developing the ear maps another was yeah. Dr. Matillon, who was talking about complementary medicine and research around that. And then there was Professor Nino as well, okay. who was who was talking specifically about research in non-medical interventions. And all of them trying to give us ideas of how we can really move research forward. You know, but yes. we'll get to that. But I, I guess I'm I'm just wondering, you know, what is it that stood out for you around around these presentations? Let me take talk about them one by one. The first I saw was uh, of Professor Nino talking about non-medical interventions and that there's a lot of scientific work on non-traditional metal, medical interventions. And he was more or less saying, we're doing fine and we're doing more research. But a lot of the research done is not done on auricular therapy, but on complementary medicine uh, in, in the whole. So that was picked up by... Professor Yves Mouton, and he was saying there should be more and more and more research. And he was saying there is on the PubMed and other fora, there's a lot of science. He also implied half of the science there is, uh, is not correct science, it's bought science. Uh, he didn't say that, but that's what we know. He implied it. <laughs> the focus uh, nowadays is very much on evidence-based medicine mm -hmm. and he said uh, there must be more and more evidence on the uh, auricular to keep on uh, on track with the other science mm. but he didn't say how to do it and uh, he was very much uh, in favor of doing multi uh, multidisciplinary uh, research david alamy had another angle david alamy is a neurologist and he uh, he explains everything that happens in the auricular uh, out of the neurology. He did this famous research where he did a functional MRI. Uh, with that, he uh, proved that it is uh, so that when you put a point in, the, in an ear, acupuncture point in the or ear, then it's really the point that's uh, connected to the thing that Nuzi said where it would be. And in research, it's always important to, to do it again by someone who's independent of the first who did the research. Mm -hmm. And Romoli, a famous Italian ear acupuncturist, came to the same findings. So we can say that is a real proof from physiology. And the other proof from the double blind research is more difficult because uh, you have to do something like sham acupuncture. Mm -hmm. But when mm. you put a needle anywhere in the body, you get endorphins. Right. So it makes it difficult to make a, a real difference between what the sham acupuncture does and what the real acupuncture does. There are some techniques to work around it. You could work with a laser mm -hmm. where when it's infrared, invisible light, you don't know if your laser is working or not. And then you can see if the eff effect of the laser is had really worked or not. But that's only one of the few things to, how to work around it. But doing a good scientific study is difficult. And most times you have to do it together with someone who's a professor or something else. Otherwise you don't get it published as well. Right. You, uh, want, you want to get it published in a, a magazine that's really outstanding. Because when we publish it in our own magazine, it, it won't have much impact. So right. we must get out of our own bubble. I like that a lot. Getting getting outside of our own bubble, you know, yeah. is uh, is really important. And I have a question for you around that specifically. Yeah. You know, you talk about these these obstacles in research for for auricular and also for acupuncture in general is that there's a really difficult time doing sham and doing randomized control trials. My impression is these are methods that are developed 
um, by the pharmaceutical industry for that are really suited for testing testing pharmaceutical medications. However, it's it's this method as you're explaining is really not designed for acupuncture. And so my my curiosity is um, is there a way to redesign research for acupuncture uh, that is still going to be accepted by researchers? that doesn't necessarily rely on, on these, these traditional methods. Yeah, there's a problem. Uh, there are people working uh, towards, they, they call it the N1 uh, research, where you uh, 